The gun registry and the Kyoto Protocol are, at least in one respect, twins. They both illustrate the uselessness of piety pretending to be policy, of half-thought mixed with full-bore emotion, substituting for a rational response to a perceived public problem. Kyoto is a great empty house of wishful thinking. Some countries who have signed on have done less than those that did not. Canada has done less than the U.S., for example. Though the U.S. Congress universally voted it down during the Clinton years, while Canada touted its signature on the accord as being in itself a great Boy Scout badge of international and environmental do-goodism. And then there's the gun registry. Whatever the gun registry was supposed to do, beyond raising a cloud of vague righteousness that something was being done, what has it specifically done for places like Toronto, say, with its year of the gun? Where real gun crime exists, it almost always is handguns, stolen, smuggled, and unregistered, that are causing havoc. Where's the registry in that picture? And today, Sheila Fraser pounded a few dozen more nine-inch nails into the coffin of the gun registry. That other response to a problem which, over the five years of its life, has been an epic catalog of unimaginable expense, was going to cost two million net and cost one billion instead. She told us of computer systems whose costs ballooned, amounts in the tens of millions not reported, and even more damning, added that the information these wonderful systems so expensively collected can either A, be incorrect, or B, incomplete. And at a press conference that the data cannot be relied on. So, it can't be relied on, its information is incomplete or incorrect, and it costs more than the tar sands. Well, not the tar sands. In the early days of this program, it was all so simple. We had then Justice Minister Alan Rock standing to tell the country all that we're asking of firearms owners is to fill out two cards and mail them in. A few postcards and a postage stamp, and we get a billion dollars? Who was the mailman? Wally Coyote? The gun registry accompanies negatives, however, by the bucket load. A cost overrun that yet will make Ripley's believe it or not. Antagonized whole swatches of harmless citizens, from duck hunters to farmers, who found themselves hectored and harassed to fill in its unreliable forms, pay its useless fees, or wind up listed as criminals if they did not. Now, Kyoto is not a registry, but it has the same impulse at its center. Vagueness of intention surrounding an amorphous good cause. The science is contentious, regardless of what the propagandists of global warming will tell you. It is advocacy driven and as much a lobby as General Motors. As Kyoto is globally, the gun registry is for us nationally. A perfect parable of yoking wishfulness to vast expenditure to appease wistful public sentiment. Whatever that sentiment urges politicians to just do something. In both cases, they did. Kyoto, eight years on, is a hollow piety, and the gun registry is a compound of excess, uselessness, annoyance, and the most highly capitalized piece of policy pointlessness since a Newfoundland government 20 years ago spent $27 million to fund a science fiction dream of growing cucumbers out of the East Coast granite. Keep the gun registry, only if they open a museum for monumental illustrations of how to waste public money. And in that museum, the registry will occupy the same place in public policy that the private sector has long ago given the Edsel. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.